Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val and I am going to be your host yet again for this wonderful episode two of uh, video editing with um, my friend Fabiola. How are you doing today, Fabiola? How are I'm things? Good. I'm so excited to get back into this project and show you guys everything that I do to finalize it. I'm really pumped. I'm pumped too. Um, yesterday was like so enlightening and so mind blowing. Um, I got a lot of really awesome knowledge out of it. And I know that you folks in the chat did too. I see some kind of returning viewers from yesterday. Welcome in everybody. Um, I see Emma, welcome in, Uma Korn, Biola, Cody Bear, Gareth, Jack, uh, Jane. Welcome in everybody. It's good to see you. Um, if you folks are actually over on the YouTube channel, however, please come over to Behance because that is where I'm going to be reading the chat. That's where I'll be forwarding questions from to Fabiola. And um, it's also where you can get all of the awesome resources and links and things. Uh, for example, we've got Fabiola's Instagram links and stuff coming in on the Behance channel. So come on over here. This is where the party's happening. It's where all the friends are. Um, and it's a good time. Um, Another thing real quick before we dive into the meat of our segment today, just want to let everybody know that we do have a brand new Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge kicking off uh, this week with Andrew Hawk Rattle. So please check that out. Um, in fact, we've got a lot of um, challenges kind of going on for Photoshop, for Illustrator, for XD that you can always check out. Really great tools and resources for free that you folks can jump in, kind of take some, some challenges, do some classes, get feedback for mentors in the Discord and improve or refresh on uh, your design skills. So definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, Fabiola, why don't you sort of reintroduce yourself uh, oh, maybe yes. for anybody who wasn't here yesterday um, and wants to know a little bit about you um, and then give us uh, your favorite kind of pizza because that's mm. you know we're asking the real questions here and that's definitely something we got to know <laughs> yeah so hi everyone if uh you weren't here yesterday my name is fabiola lara i'm an illustrator designer animator video editor you know creative person mm -hmm. and um today we're going to be editing a studio vlog so popular kind of like illustrator creative type of vlogs that are commonly found on youtube um so that's what we're doing today but let me just show you a little bit of, of my work. So I have a podcast called Draws in Spanish and I make portraits of every guest. They're all Latinx artists that I feature on the podcast. I'm an illustrator. Here's some of my art, more comics, some more art. So yeah, I primarily draw, but then I like to support all of my illustration work by creating videos and creating, you know, just content around it. And my favorite pizza. Mm -hmm. is a vegan white pizza mm. i i love white pizzas it's i me. i had i had one the other day that was probably the best pizza i have ever had and i think it was actually vegan too i myself am not mm -hmm. vegan but i was told that um i would be in for exceptional vegan food and they were not wrong yes, i was not lied like to when they <laughs> use cashew ricotta mm. and that's when you know you need to trust a place if they're making their own <laughs> cashew ricotta you got to order that pizza even if you're not vegan all right um, all right so yeah let's let's dive in why don't you show yes. us what you worked on yesterday and then let us know what we're diving into Okay, so yesterday we worked on this intro using Fresco to do some hand um, handmade illustrations. I'm gonna go ahead and play where we were at yesterday. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna. All right, so that's yesterday's intro montage. We used um, markers and automate to sequence to quickly put together that little trailer. Uh, I went ahead and revamped it just a touch because I wanted to kind of redo the handmade illustrations. If you wanna know how to make your own hand-drawn hand animated text for your videos, mm -hmm. please rewatch yesterday's video. That will have all of the deep dive into exactly how I do it, but let me show you what I ended up kind of tweaking just so you guys are caught up. Ooh. Made it just a little bigger. I love it. And I made the sparkles a little tighter. Oh. And then 
And I have a teaser. I, I am going to show you what we're about to learn how to do. So okay. keep watching. This little thingy. Oh, that little so moger. Cool. Yeah. And then I added the um, the day text, which we did. I did it the same way we, we worked on the studio vlog text yesterday, but mm -hmm. it says Monday. So I want to show you guys. I, I love this little. I'm going to uh, mute it real quick because it's loud. Um. This little moger, I'm gonna replay it for you guys. So you can see it here. It does that little thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's like. I think Just my um, transition, transition is doing something weird, but yeah, I think that's my transition that's making it pause funky. But that's what it looks like, and they're so fun. And yeah, so that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today. But I also want to show you what we did yesterday before we keep going. We also yesterday, aside from doing the intro sequence, was right there. Which is, that's just what we, um, what I just played. Mm -hmm. We also laid out the rest of the vlog. And we did this using pancake style editing, which I'm not in that view mode right now. But it would be this one up here where you have two um, timelines going together. So you can quickly make your selection um so yeah we laid out like the chunk of the vlog and now today i'm gonna show you a couple tricks to take it from something a little plain to jazz it up a little more um some simple things you can do so the first thing i want to show you is that mogurt that i just played for you it, this one right here and i'm going to show you how how i did that and let me see right here i'm so pumped for this okay um... Oh, Umicorn has a quick question for you. Is that an actual actual term, pancake editing? I think um, so. I okay. believe so. Yeah. I, th I like, think, I think if you Google it is or it, isn't, it's still cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't make it up. I think I accidentally, not yesterday, but I have previously called it sandwich editing. Oh, Because okay. that's also what it looks like to me. But I think the official professional common term is pancake. I okay. don't know if it's pancake editing or pancake style editing. But it, it comes up when you Google it. There's like, you'll see different people's take on it. Awesome. And then Cornell um, is curious, are your podcasts in English or Spanish? The podcast is in English. It's called Draws in Spanish, but we talk in English because it's US-based mm -hmm. Latino artists, Latino, Latina, Latinx. Um, awesome. Yeah, so they're in English. Cool. Um, and okay, so I just cleared this timeline of what I had done previously. Mm -hmm. Actually, I cleared it too far because I just want to walk you guys exactly through what I'm doing. Okay. So if I'm just muting these things so we're not distracted, it would, the intro sequence would otherwise end like right kind of abruptly and you could go straight into like Monday footage. Mm -hmm. But I like having that little transition to add like just a little flair. And yeah. it's really simple with Mogerts. So what we're going to do is enter this graphics panel and we're going to go, I'm going to just reset here. Um, boop, boop, boop. Got to move some things around, guys. I like the, I like the mogger there too, because it kind of adds like just a really cute, like stylized break between the intro and the meat of the content too. It's just Yeah, that's really how nice. I feel. It just like moves, moves the audience over. Yeah. Okay. So the one that I'm using here is called Vertical Contact Sheet Title. It's free, so if you're using Premiere Pro, just search for it. Um, and what I do is I just grab it and just drop it right in. Nice. And uh, I've used it before, so it's obviously loads pretty fast. And I wanna make sure there's no gaps here. No, there's no gaps. Okay. And what we do is just double click on it and this essential graph, if it's not already open, which mine was already open, so it doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. this little panel shows up and that's the panel that you need in order to start editing it. And so right now nothing is there, right? If you like look at it, it's like nothing's happening. So what you do is you go to media replacement and here it took this specific template has three spots for your media, the center, left, and right. And so all you do is drag and drop your footage to that media replacement area. Oh, so okay. yesterday I showed you guys, we have, I have the bins by days and then I have, I have, oops, boop, I have this intro bin, mm -hmm. 
which has all the clips that I want for my intro. So that's why I like having an intro bin separate from my footage bin, because then I can just like keep referencing those clips as opposed to like finding them in their original day folder. Mm -hmm. This goes back to organization. Yes, the organization from yesterday. If you, <laughs> another reason to check out yesterday's stream because it was yes. off the hook, as the cool kids say these days. <laughs> it was very cool. <laughs> yes, if you need to get organized, definitely rewatch that. Okay, so what you do is you just grab your clip, drag it, and drop it into the media area. So I'm going to do this one left media, and you start seeing it populate immediately. I want the center media to be like my work, so I'm going to do that. And then I, maybe I'll do like this little coffee on the right media. That drag and drop is like so quick and it's easy It's so too. handy. Like you so don't have to go in and, and, and load up something mm -hmm. in a specific place. You just put it there. Yeah, it's super, super handy. So, okay, now you're starting to see all of that. I'm just moving this around so that it's a little bigger for you guys. Um, so that's how it would play. And he, the cool thing is you can really start making adjustments. Like, for example, the center um, footage, it's upside down because I shot top down and my camera didn't, you know, orientate itself. So I'm going to do 180 and now it's flipped nice. and I can also like move it. So I'm like, okay, maybe I want, I want this to show a little more. There we go. And then maybe I want to make the scale a little smaller. That kind of got cut a little bit, but you can just slowly ease. There you go. That's filling it nicely. The left is fine. The right looks a little zoomed in. So we're going to zoom out a tiny bit. See how far we can go. Too far. Maybe that's just right. And maybe I'll like move it. If you use the X and Y, you can slowly move it and nudge it over. So yeah, that's like a really fun way to use that footage. It's the same footage, but now you're like remixing it to make it feel kind of unique to your video and different. And there's a ton of Mogurts that you can browse and use, and they're all similarly simple. Um, but here, let's play this through now. Oh, I love it. See, it can hold there for a little longer if you want it to. You can adjust the length and then it zooms right out. So if you make it really short, it'll be short. If you make it long, it'll be long. So Just when, like you, any other when you adjust the length, does it like auto adjust the entire content of the mogger? Yes, it oh, does, which, <laughs> which is kind of the, the icing on the cake because you can now treat this and make it super long or super short, however you need. Mm -hmm. And it's going to automatically adjust. You don't have to go in and keyframe anything, none of that. Okay. Um, so let's go back to these controls. So every Mogurt has its own kind of settings that you can control. Mm -hmm. So let's explore these ones so you guys get an understanding of what's, of what's happening. I could change the background color to maybe like pink or purple. This is, that's a horrible color. Let's not pick that one. <laughs> All right. I don't love it, but you know, I'm just saying the option is But you there. could do it. Yeah. Oops. What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I press <laughs> guys. Um, and then contact sheet controls. These are like the opacity of those little triangles. If they're too oh, bright, you can okay. turn them down. You can really control so many. This is like the roundness of the video mat. Mm -hmm. I like how they look, but this is cool too. You can do the text controls. So like maybe here I'll put like my handle because I want people to remember to go follow me. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> so it'll change right there. Or I could just go like this so that it matches a little more and you can change the font type. So if you have like brand fonts that you like to use, right? Like you use them on your Instagram, you use them all over on your website and everything, go ahead and use them here. Um, it's super handy. And um, yeah, I just love how customizable um, Mogurts are and like it makes you seem really pro without actually having to go in and, custom and like build it out yourself, you know? Yeah, and like the customization here, just like with you kind of changing the background and showing us how to edit the text and all that good stuff really helps me at least to visualize. Like, I feel like you and I could take this exact same Mogart file and customize it so that the videos are have a completely different vibe. Like you could use these for a plethora of different projects. You don't just have to use it for a project that looks like it matches it at first glance in the, the panel there where you're grabbing them. Right. So that's awesome. Um, yes, we've got Laura so 
uh, asking, are all Moggart's premium content or are there also free ones included within Premiere? There, there's free and there's premium. So this one that I just showed you is free. Awesome. Um, you can go ahead and use it right now. It's right here. It's free. I just started it so that it's a favorite so that I could find it for you guys easily. But yeah, it's totally free. And um, I also really like, like if you like this one, I also want to show you one more because it's similar. It's this vertical versatile split screen title it works similarly. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show you guys real quick it has so many customization options so for the media replacements again there's three so let's just start dragging oops i have to open them and then we'll start dragging the, the media right in there okay and this one has a lot more kind of like oh wow uh vibe to it like it's way more edited than the other one um but i think that's kind of cool and you can customize it. So yeah, yeah. now it looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this because it drives me crazy to see it like that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, now you have it like this. So this could also be another way that I transition the video instead of the last one. And it's kind of cool because this Smogurt has this like animated text. But if you don't want the text because we've been doing our own text, you can just not write anything and then that's gone. Mm-hmm. Or you can find a tech, use, use, um, put the anime text on top of it. Like we have this Monday one, we could do something like that and edit this to be smaller and work with our own text plus a mogurt. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's fun because like this one is more stylized mm -hmm. and you can like amp up the noise or amp down Ooh, the noise. Okay. So you so, can like, really get in can... there with those. Okay. This yes. is awesome. And this one also has, let me see, this light leak control. Ooh, yeah. Because I was going to say the light like leaks are so much. cool and they really kind of add that atmosphere. I love it. But sometimes they're too bright. And so now mm -hmm. they, when they animate, they're a little bit less intense. Um, and you can, this, as you can see here, the smoker has so many customization options. So definitely like kind of explore what a Mogurt can do. Don't, don't judge a Mogurt by its cover, like open it up, <laughs> open it up, see what it's got. Because sometimes there's, there's more to it than you realize when you're just browsing. Um, for example, I know there's a spot here. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. So matte controls, uh, the black part is called a matte. And so this one has, you can do two videos vertical. Oh, wow. You can do three videos like this. You can do like this. So many. And so this wow, is really wow. cool because I could see a version where um, we have on the left kind of the drawing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not where we pause in this video. It doesn't look great. Let me see if I can kind of uh, set up an example here. Of what yeah, I'm let's talking do it. About. And this is like seriously the don't judge a market by its cover because unless yes. you like kind of drag this in and start editing it you might have no idea that you could transform it into the perfect mogger for your project you just got to get in there and kind of experiment yes so let me see let me see if i can find another one maybe it's like all right so this is not like necessarily the, the two best pairings but i just want to show you guys what's possible you could mm -hmm. have a close in on the left showing you actually working and on the right you have a zoom out showing kind of the the scenario right so like i would be like here at my desk which is chaotic because this is like yeah. a rearranging video but you know you can have two different setups or you could have for example a reference photo like imagine if this was the, the photo that i was using a reference yeah and yeah. The actual one I wanted to show you guys is, let's see. Also, ever since yesterday, I have been craving one of those pastries, just so you know. Like, I feel like oh. I've seen you kind of like show off yes, that, pastry that pastry so many was times. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's an example, you guys. I could also use this to do kind of like a voiceover moment. Mm hmm and it looks a little cooler. I think right here the audio won't play, but I'm gonna show you how to make that work. So, because the Mogurt like pulls in the, the video, but it doesn't necessarily always pull in the audio that's playing because you would have two audios mm -hmm. and it wouldn't know which one to give preference to. Gotcha, gotcha. But okay. I have this kind of crazy workaround. So please, if you have questions, let me know because 
I'm not exactly sure that I'm going to do my best to explain exactly what I've done here. Here's my Moger example. Okay. So here you have the audio. So basically what I did was I, let me open this one, close some of these things so that you guys know where I'm working here. So media one would be the one on the left and media two is my, me talking to the camera. So what I did was this is actually like silent. Ooh, you can like, because the Moger by itself is silent, mm -hmm. but I dropped in that footage kind of again underneath. Oh, okay. And I okay. dropped that footage underneath exactly at the spot that I dropped in the Mogurt and it. Okay, guys. So um, in this shot right now, you are seeing me pack it. Which is not the best. Uh, I have to line up like the left side. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's a cool way to use a Mogurt too. Like I'm using this for a side by side, which is kind of just like another fun way to have two versions, two two clips playing without it just being just another like voiceover video. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions about this? I know that sounded a little complex, um, but it's literally you just have to match up the audio that you want with the Mogurt. And I recommend doing that by clipping the te the clip that you want first. That way okay. you just prop it in twice. So like, should I do it? Let me let me see if I can yeah, uh, yeah, show you guys exactly how to it, do it. I'm going to delete this. It's gone now. It's, oh no. It's gone now. We're going to have to redo it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if we're going to do that exact example, I would drop in the Mogurt. Okay. And so right now the Moger is empty. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would take, find the footage that I want. Yep. Footage. So I believe what I was doing is on a Friday. Also, um, as Fabiola said, please, um, if you have any questions, um, if you're curious about anything, uh, please feel free to post your questions in chat. And you're not, uh, you don't just have to only ask questions about specifically what we're working on at the moment. If you have any like burning video editing questions or maybe questions about just working as a video editor, you know, just general profession questions, please feel free to ask because we would love to chat with you guys and offer any advice that we can. Um, yes. Bruce says, I'm not well versed in Premiere or After Effects, but can one make Mogerts? I believe you can. I think it's an After Effects type of endeavor. Okay, <laughs> and you would set of up, endeavor. I love you it. Would, you would set it up using After Effects and then mm -hmm. import them into Premiere. I, I think it can actually be pretty simple, but mm -hmm. um, it just kind of depends on your vision for the Mogert. But mm -hmm. the cool thing is there's so many already made for you that you can kind of customize to make your own that if you feel like you're, it's like a new thing for you, mm -hmm. I would recommend just playing with the existing Mogerts and slightly tweaking them to work for you as opposed to building entire new ones. You know, like you want to get the video finished first mm -hmm. before you start like building out systems. <laughs> No, that's totally true. Say. And and we've gone through, there's like a lot of customizing that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like there's, what, what they've done is really made, um, like you said, super pro videos, really accessible to everybody, regardless of their level of skill and experience with doing like these kinds of animations and transitions. Like you kind of have it at your fingertips. Um, yes. Highly encourage you to make Mogerts if that's, you know, you're feeling that call in you. Um, but I would also love to um, see you jump in and experiment. And also, if anyone in the chat has explored the Mogerts that are in Premiere, um, let us know what are, what your favorites are. Maybe share the titles of them in the chat, because I, I, I bet we could get some really good ones in there and everyone can kind of build their um, library of favorite Mogerts today. Yes, cool. definitely, definitely. Okay, so what I just did was I dropped in the footage that I wanted in the left and the right, right here under the media replacements. Mm -hmm. And on the right, I have this voiceover called Packages. Mm -hmm. And I just, so right now, if I play it, no audio plays. But if I bring that same footage underneath, well, now it's above, but there we go. Underneath, it should play 
oops i have it on the muted track there you go i was like oh i have a whole podcasting setup i can do video too and it might be fun to try that out and then if you want to cut it you just like cut, i would recommend cutting the clip first mm -hmm. so like let's say i only want this little portion of it i delete that because i want let's say my clip to start right there mm-hmm Bring it over, and now it's not going to match up. You're going to freak out. Watch. To be working on the. <laughs> it doesn't match up, but that's because you didn't drop that clip in. Mm -hmm. You have to make this its own clip. I think it's called make subsequence. Okay. If, no, wait, hold on. It's not that. It's there's another. There's another click. Hold on one second. Sometimes we have to hunt for things. That's all right. Um, it happens. It happens. Let's see. We've got some stuff coming in. Misty. Welcome in, Misty. It's good to see you. Um, I have to transfer a slide presentation to video and add voiceover. Is this easy to do in Premiere? Um, I, I, I would think so. Yeah. I would probably use um, Premiere yeah. to do that. If you have the video of your slide um, and then you can record it as it goes through in Premiere, I think would be... A, a good idea yeah i think that's totally doable hold on guys mm -hmm. i was doing that and i think i have done it before and now i'm like getting tripped up but let me show you that is a-okay honestly i feel like there's so much happening in premiere that it's it a is, sub it's clip i need to make it a so you make clip. it a okay. sub clip but now i'm not seeing the um let me see let me, let me see if we can Make sub clip. Where is it? Right here. Clip. Make sub clip. Awesome. Then you name it. So now it's named. It's right here. So now if I put this up front and I drop this sub clip into the moker, it should line up. And then I also send a... So by using of... sub clips, you're able to get a specific clip mm -hmm. from larger clip and you can use that specific clip in the moker to line up with the audio so you gotcha. so this is the audio from the original clip so this is what's actually happening right now is the clip the, is playing episode arc it's a portrait and then the moker is kind of acting as the segue to have two different clips playing mm -hmm. so i know it's it's a little bit complex but this is if you want to use mogerts with kind of the audio happening instead of just as a stylized kind of transition. Mm -hmm. no, I, wish... I love it, though, because I think like maybe it is a little bit intricate, but I think you've explained it really well. So once we can get that down pat, then we can start to expand upon yes. it and, you know, and do more. So this is like mogerts. We can use mogerts as a transition or as a little flair. And this is mogerts as like an entire. This can be like a, a long part of your video now with yeah. voiceover and you know, you can control all of the details of the Mogurt. So I think it's a fun way to take Mogurt to an, the next level and your video to the next level without actually having to build it out yourself. Um, question from Cornell. How much time does it take you to learn Premiere and feel comfortable while working in it? Ooh, this is a never ending thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm always learning new things about Premiere because Premiere is super powerful. Mm -hmm. So there's always new things that I'm learning. I'm like, oh, I had no idea that that feature was just like a little click. And I, m you know, made my whole video so much better by clicking that on. And I didn't even know it was there. So Premiere, you're always learning it. But it took me probably like, I don't know, maybe like two months of like testing things to really get comfortable. Mm -hmm. At first, it can really feel especially if you're used to like Photoshop or Illustrator, those programs are so different from Premiere Pro, like the setup. Mm -hmm. um, if your favorite tool is After Effects, I feel like Premiere Pro will be easy for you. <laughs> but when you go from Photoshop to an Illustrator to uh, Premiere Pro, it can feel like a different world. But now to me, honestly, I feel really comfortable in Premiere Pro. And I think you can too, if you just spend like a couple hours, you know, just really like play with a video. Mm -hmm and then you'll get comfortable. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think um, it, it's it's very, it can be very dependent on you and your own expectations of yourself. When I first started learning Adobe apps um, on my own, I think that I had this idea in my brain that I wasn't comfortable and could not be super confident unless I knew everything, you know? But I think that you change your thinking on that a little bit and start to congratulate yourself when you achieve something and get better at 
you know, the most useful parts of the app for you personally, a little bit at a time, um, then you just start to add to the list of things you can do. And, and like Fabiola said, just play around in it. And I think that, you know, also as Paco says, we're all students. So it's just kind of about you and, and, and how you feel in the program. And I don't think that you need to be like a, a premier pro expert, you know, and feel like you've reached that amazing pro level before you're like a premier pro pro you know you just yeah. kind of take it little bits at a time and and use what what works for you and then you know after you spend some time in it then eventually i think you start to develop a little bit more confidence but you know be easy on yourself and and just play around and have fun and i think you get there yes you definitely get there eventually you just have to keep playing with it mm -hmm. um so the next thing i wanted to show you guys was how i went from so we went from intro to the main sequence by using that mogurt transition and and using the little animated monday text so you can see it oops sorry guys i'm in the pancake view and then you can't see so much the project view but we went like that let me display it i'm not hiding it <laughs> here we go Just like good. that. Good, I so, love it. Seamless. I feel like we're good with the intro now. Um, it has a little music. I didn't play it. Let's see if we can play it. There we go. Um, and so then we get into the color coded days. And I just wanted to show you guys. I still need to add these two days. I'm gonna go ahead and just like bring it all down, even though mm -hmm. in reality, I'd probably cut it down a little bit, but it's because I want to show you guys something that I really want to do. So with time-lapse footage, if you're working on a studio vlog, um, I just like to speed it up just by doing, by changing the speed and duration, maybe I'll do like 200%. You don't, if you speed it up too fast, it'll look a little choppy. So you have to be careful how, how much you want to speed it up. And I also recommend like, don't just speed up two hours of you working, mm -hmm. cut it, <laughs> yeah. cut that out. You, nobody needs to see you do it like 10 times. Like maybe mm -hmm. just show them how you did it once, show them the final reveal, that kind of thing. So in here, I recorded the entire process, but like, mm, I can probably delete that. And and that's what I, I, uh, I would have done up here was kind of skip through it and only add some pieces, but the reason I just like brought all the footage down is because I wanted to show you guys one example and I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it right here. So on this packaging footage, it's really kind of boring, right? I'm going to mute it because I think I'm like playing a podcast in the background. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of boring and I want to do a voiceover like we just like I just showed you guys. And so I could do the Mogurt that I just showed you. I could use that to to have the side-by-side -side of me packaging and then my voiceover, but I want to show you guys one really cool way to do it using animated handmade frames. Um, just like how we did the animated text yesterday, it's kind of using the same technique, but I wanted to show you guys another way to use Fresco to put your own personal stamp on your video. Mm -hmm. So I want to move over to Fresco in just a second. And um, what we're basically going to do is open up another file. I think we're going to just use the same file from yesterday to keep everything in one fresco file and build out our own custom frames. And so this opens a whole new world, you guys. Let's go ahead over to the iPad. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. I had so much fun yesterday kind of diving into the title illustrations and stuff. So I'm really pumped about this. Um, that's another thing that you folks can check out. I think we had a link posted um, earlier uh, to the stream from yesterday. Um, so maybe we can get that link back in cause we can, you know, have people bookmark it for later because there was some cool illustration stuff there, um, too, but I'm pumped for, for this. So pumped because yesterday was fun. There we go. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Let me just grab the pencil here. Okay. Um, also Cornell, he like, for whatever reason, posted like a spam of a bunch of random letters. And then now we have, whoops, sorry, my cat came to say hi. <laughs> so his cat was on his keyboard. Nice. I love it. Okay. 
So I, this is the same project f- fresco file that we worked on yesterday. I just duplicated it because I'm paranoid of messing up my original files. <laughs> There's no need to do it. I just like to do it. Um, so let me show you guys. This is um, the ones I worked on that you saw. At, I updated on today's video. So here's the studio vlog file, mm-hmm. little stars, my Monday. So you've seen that already in the video. Now we're going to work on some frames that kind of look like this. Okay. So this is a fun frame and something like this. Wait, I got to tap into it because I have everything turned off. So let's get started. I'm just going to show you guys how I did this. I'm going to walk you through how I did it. I just wanted to show you the final result so you like know what I'm doing and why. Okay. Um, so I what I do- colors, by the way. Yeah, I love to use Adobe Capture. I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys have tried that app, but it's incredible. It's uh, on your phone. And I just like to take pictures when I'm out. Like if I see something cool, I take a picture of it. And then Adobe Capture will help me identify the font in case I mm-hmm. want to use the font later. But identify the color palette too is really yeah. fun. I, I um, use it for those two reasons as well. And I also, um, I spent like two weeks ago, I spent a day, um, I laid out paper across the counter in my kitchen and I started throwing splashes of like ground coffee on the oh. paper. And I was taking pictures and making like gritty gradient textures yes. and it exports it as a vector with a transparent background which is so cool puts it right in your library so capture is magic capture it's, it's magical. is incredible <laughs> what i did i think like these are all the um swatches i have from capture and a lot mm-hmm. of them are from like i went to a museum and i really liked a bunch of like color palettes and different artworks and i just mm-hmm. take pictures of them and then i pull out a color palette and it's in my creative cloud library yeah. so i can use it across all the apps it's incredible so chef's kiss this is the palette i'm using it's this one right here um but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take the let's do the purple so you can show you guys and then right now i'm working because we do the animated text in photoshop i'm gonna keep working in pixels Mm -hmm. some of you out there may be thinking why don't you use the vector tools you can Mm -hmm. you can use the vector tools and then open it in ai and it'd be similar workflow I'm just going to use Photoshop to keep it kind of the same as yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to use this hardened round brush. And basically all we're going to do is draw this frame. And if you hold the pencil down, you're able to make a straight line. Now this wasn't the straightest line on earth. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. But yeah, this is how you can start building a frame. And so I am taking a very standard approach to this because I want kind of the frame to look like this. But in theory, your frame could look like anything. Like Mm -hmm. you are not bound to these frame boxes if you don't want it to be. So just to just to recap here so when you are drawing a line in fresco, you draw the line, you stop where you want it to stop, and then you just keep it pressed to the to the canvas Mm -hmm. and then it straightens it out for you awesome exactly so if you just press if you hold it down it straightens it out i just use the paint bucket tool to fill in the lines but you can see there's still a little bit because we're working with pixels Mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of connections that aren't quite there so i'm just going to go in and fill oops wrong brush fill them in does that ever happen to you guys that it goes to the eraser mode because you accidentally double tap. Yeah, sometimes I, I do that <laughs> by it's, accident. It's not fun, but it's fine. <laughs> not a big deal. So I'm just cleaning it up here because I just happen to want it flat like this. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted, you could make it with any type of brush. That's why I like using the pixel layers. You can make it with any type of brush. And then I'm going to jazz it up a bit. Let's do it. So I'm going to use still the same color palette. And I'm going to switch the brush to this regular pencil brush, which I really like. Or maybe I'll try this one. Kind of have to press a little harder with that one, but it's cool. I love the texture. So I want to make some stars that kind of animate in my frame. Okay. So the frame is cool because you don't even have to have it be static. It can be, it can be animated similarly to how we animated the 
the text. So you can start getting crazy with it. The, the touch inputs are <laughs> making my stars look funny. Um, Laura is saying it happens to her too um, when you try to draw and it's the eraser. Um, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Yep, Laura gets it. It happens, it happens. Okay. Uh, this is like like this texture. It, I'm gonna go to a different one. I think um the colors that you've chosen is like a really sweet, lovely, like kind of powdery version of the Beetlejuice colors, too. Like oh, yeah, Beetlejuice with a totally different vibe, and I love it so much. Yes. I think so, in general, green and purple actually typically go like pretty great together. Yeah, it's one of my favorite color combos. I tend to use it a lot. I just even when they're vibrant, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just draw like decorating my frame and you could decorate your frame however you want. So I'm doing stars because I think it won't be too distracting mm -hmm. to the overall footage. So that's something to keep in mind too. Like if your frame like is just a bunch of words going in a circle, like that might be kind of distracting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so keep in mind like what you want to showcase, but So that's that. And what I would do, I'm going to just like move you to the more completed piece. So you don't, you guys don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over. Okay. We're going to go into, oops. Change the opacity here. There we go. So this is the completed version of what I was just showing you guys. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I, um, drew the stars three times to get them to wiggle just like we did with the animated text. That's the effect I was going after. So now we have wiggle three times. You could actually animate them to like move in all different locations. I just wanted to keep it simple for the example, mm -hmm. but yeah, you can get really wild with it. You're basically doing frame by frame animation. So you can do, you know, if you want to have them be shooting stars, you can. Nice. And I made that one. And then we have this one too. And this one I added, so the, the dots don't move, but I added a little text. So I wanted things to like be more static for this frame. Okay. And yeah, now we have two frames. Um, you could make a frame instead of that. That's like, oops, I keep tapping the wrong place. Okay. We could have a frame. If you didn't want to, you could just have a single frame. That's like a circle. Mm-hmm and have it be just a circle and decorate around it and then have that be your frame if you just want one shot. Yeah, 100%. So you definitely don't have to do like two frames. You could also do three frames. You you can really start getting creative here. This on its own doesn't seem impressive, but if you saw it with like animations on top, it starts to get fun and way more interesting. I think it would be fun to do um, like you did the the circular frame one if you didn't want to go crazy with like designs and illustrations there what you could do is you could choose a color that's just slightly darker than this green um, or slightly lighter than the green um, and you could do three different layers where you just scribble over the top and leave some of that light green peeking through um, yeah. and then just animate that so it just looks in the background like you know plain frame but it's got some like wiggly texture on it mm -hmm. just to kind of give it a slight movement would be really yeah. cool yeah for sure you can start you can start seeing here how like fresco really allows you to draw whatever graphic you want mm -hmm. and i think the frames is cool because you can start playing with multiple clips in one shot so that's mm -hmm. why i wanted to show you guys this um so basically once you build out your frame i'm gonna go ahead and delete some of the frames i i had made just to show you guys how i went about making these okay um just so that we can move it over okay so i have two frames i'm gonna show you guys how i would use these two frames in premiere pro by going back over to um the desktop and pulling up photoshop so but before we do that, just make sure that you're saved. So just click save now, click on that drop down and click save now to make sure your Fresco file is saved mm -hmm. and go back to the main menu and double check that you have, um, you're looking for this, this check mark right there. You see that green check mark, you want that to be selected before you move back to the desktop. So now that we're done with that, we just 
go back to Premiere Pro. All right, guys, we're back in Premiere Pro. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to minimize Premiere Pro because I want to open up Photoshop so I can show you how I use those fresco files. Okay. So you, you bring up Photoshop. You let it load. <laughs> yeah, give it some time. Give, it, give um, it a second. Also, I would love to know from the chat, um, just kind of while we're going over this portion of the process, now that, because um, maybe some of you hadn't seen yesterday's and seen the animation and, and all of the cool stylizing with illustrations, um, why don't you folks throw some cool ideas in for how you might use um, this method to customize a video. Maybe there's something that would be cool to do that we haven't thought of. Um, give us your ideas. How would you use illustration or just um, handwritten uh, images to, to spice up a video? Yes, let us know. Um, okay, so I just pulled up the Fresco file. So it's the same exact file. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do real quick, just to not alter the Fresco file in case I wanna go back to it, is do command shift S and um, save it on my computer. Okay. This is just to prevent having like my files all mixed up. So I'm gonna actually put this under animated backgrounds. At, oops, sorry guys, click the wrong spot. And I have one already loaded in here, but I wanna show you guys how to load it. So I'm gonna call this O2 frames, or you know what? I'm gonna do O1 new frames so we can be clear. And what I want to do is delete all the other groups maybe because we can, real quick, maybe we can kind of bump over to the other side of our screen real quick. Cause I think we're covering the layers right now. And I know yesterday oh. some people couldn't see it. And so now we can, there we go. Um, oh no, we've moved. So you can, you can leave it small if you want. We're on the other side now. Um, so I just wanted to make sure oh, that before okay. you jumped into it, that we bumped over to the other side so Got everyone it. could see it clearly. All right, so here's my layers. So these are all the layers that we worked on in Fresco, but I just want to keep this layer on, this top layer that has the background and these stars. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the top, the, I mean, this layer right here and the rest of the files and click delete. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this as a separate file. This is again, because I want all my frames separate. So the O1 new frames file that we just did has everything. That's just to cover our bases, mm -hmm. but this is for our star frame only. So click save. You can see here it was saved. Then we click command Z to undo. And now I'm going to do the same thing for this one here. So I'm going to delete everything, but that layer group. And you can see the files here. I have the background, the dots, and the voice over time. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do command shift save, save on my computer, and I'm going to name it something else. So I'm going to do O2 voice over time. Nice. <laughs> save. <laughs> All right. So now we saved both of those two frames as their own PSD files. That's just to make our life easier once we get into Premiere Pro. So, okay, I'm gonna click save. I like to click save a lot. And then command quit, and we're done with Photoshop. I'm gonna go back over to our Premiere profile, and I'm gonna actually go into this view, the not pancake view, just to um, kind of make it easier for you guys to see what, what exactly is happening. Okay. Um, okay, so I wanna do a voiceover on this footage right here, which is me packaging. So what I'm gonna do is, First, import the frames. So I have here this graphics folder, and I, these are two other files I have, or folders I have, but I'm gonna actually import that same graphics folder here called animated backgrounds, drag and drop it right in there. And I this is what's gonna come up. Hold on one second, guys, actually. I don't wanna up import all of those. I wanna import the ones that we need just to keep it simple. So. It's the star frame and the voiceover time files. Those are, the, those are the ones we just saved. Okay. So I'm going to click and drag them into that bin and we get this little window. So you have to be careful. Don't just click OK because it won't work. <laughs> you really need to uh, click on the drop down and select sequence and then OK. And then same thing over here, sequence and OK. 
And now those two bins will be here with their pixel layer and their sequence layer. We're awesome. gonna be working just with the sequence layer to make the magic happen. Okay, let's start with the star frame. So you double click it and it'll go down to your timeline. Mm -hmm. And this again, we're repeating the process from yesterday. So you can see it. Let me see if I can just close this program just real quick. Or I'll just minimize it so we can see what's really going on. Okay. We have star file, star, star, and then the background. Mm -hmm. So we want to have the background extend as far as we need it to. But first, I'm going to animate these little three, which are the ones that we want to wiggle. So mm -hmm. I, sele I select them all. You can just click and drag to select, then hit right click, speed and duration. And I like to do 04 or 05. It also depends on your frame rate in your timeline, but this tends to work for me. Okay. So go ahead and try that if you're unsure. And then I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what's happening. We're gonna select the bottom two and start staggering the clip. So again, this is a lot like yesterday, but we're just using it for a different technique. And then you do copy and you start just stacking them. And then you're doing the same technique that you did where um, you don't have to do this one at a time. You can save time by, as you start to duplicate more, you just start copying and duplicating yes. even more until you, you know, you've, you're finished in a couple of moments instead of doing it one at a time. Doing it. Yeah. Oops. Sometimes this happens and I don't know like why necessarily, but for hmm. this one, we're just going to have to select and drag as opposed to cop pressing command V. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's also... a, a setting or something. Sorry, um, I, I I think we have some questions in the chat for you. Yeah. Um, so Bruce says, I know I've been around the block here at Behance, but um, when do you distinguish using Premiere or After Effects and what for? Um, I think Premiere is a way, it's meant for video editing. So if you're editing like a YouTube video, a uh, TikTok, a reel, just something that is video based. Mm -hmm. I would stick with Premiere. But if you're trying to animate, like, usually, like, it's for character animation or something, or you're trying to animate, like, what, like, what pop things popping in, things popping out, things sliding around the screen, I would go to After Effects for that because you can keyframe it. You can do some keyframing in Premiere, but it's way less robust. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely use. After Effects only for animating something like a graphic or, um, it, yeah, it's almost like more graphics than it is video. I try to think of the names um, when, because because I honestly, I'm glad that you asked that, Bruce, because I was a little confused at first too, especially when I was very unfamiliar with the, with the both of them. But for me, like Premiere is like the premiere of a movie. It's like a video with, you know, with people video editing um, footage that you have taken. And then After Effects is, to me in my head, it's just effects after the fact. So you're not really editing videos. You're taking probably a clip of a video that's already finished and you're adding some kind of effect to it, or you're creating um, like a mogert or you're making um, an intro or outro, like Fabiola says, like things moving around, weird special effects, you know, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that after you've edited a video in Premiere or something like that. Um, so yeah. that's, that's kind of how I see it in my, in my head. Um, and, and then I think that's a, a big reason why people tend to do premiere and then bring in a couple, um, after effect files into your premiere project Yeah, yeah. because they're so good at what they do and it's better to play with them together than to like, if you were to try to edit a whole video in after effects, it would just be too heavy. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, and then Laura says, I missed a bit. Did Fabiola add all elements in different layers? Also, what would be the difference if she adds them as PNGs versus a PSD file? Yes. Yeah, so the cool thing about adding a PSD file is it contains all of the PNGs within it, just like, like this and makes a sequence. And that sequence, then you can add effects to it that premiere like transition effects, um, just like 
and just like put it next to your clips. If I didn't import this PSD, I would have to import these PNGs individually and I would have this mess, this chaos in oh, my main time. timeline. Oh yeah. no. And it would just get really <laughs> sloppy because then what if you want to move it over? Mm -hmm. Now suddenly you're like selecting the whole thing and getting the clips from underneath mm -hmm. and having to deselect things just to do that. That's kind of chaotic. So that's why I think it's way better to import a PSD that already contains the PNG files you want, because then it sets up a beautiful sequence that's way easier to work with. Um, I feel like sometimes people don't notice this because maybe the video that they're doing is small or it's like short or they only have like a couple little things. But when you start getting into like like this, um, this has just a lot of repetition to it to get mm -hmm. that little wiggle. Then it starts getting crazy to have that on your timeline. Yeah. Having it if, packaged this way is so amazing. Yeah. Okay. So here you guys see, all I did was repeat it and I ended up like, uh, taking a section of it like this section. Let me see if I can, <laughs> I got to zoom in a little further for you guys. Okay, I just ended up taking like this section, copying it all and then pasting it to keep that mm -hmm. background and everything together. Um, and then once I had that for like a quite some time, I um, dropped that sequence down onto my timeline. And so now that's what you're seeing here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna uh, break this little moment just to turn my footage around because it's, it's upside down. <laughs> I showed you guys how to do this yesterday. I think that is like your stick. kryptonite is like a oh, video it, being just flipped upside down. Just watching it like that, I'm just like, what is happening? Okay, so now it's not upside down, but it's covering both frames, right? Mm -hmm. I only want it on one side. So this just goes into effect controls and it's actually pretty easy. So we're going to click on the footage. So I'm actually going to make it a little clip just so it's easier to work with. Mm -hmm. But we're going to here and you want to have your effects controls open, which I don't right now. I think it's just double click there. One second, you guys. It's because my effect controls is here. I, don't, I want it there. There we go. Okay. Now you can see everything that's going on. So boom. Okay, so this is the footage. I already flipped it because it's 180 right here. I'm gonna close this panel so you guys don't get confused. I want you only looking at the essentials. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's the footage. Here's my effect controls. I want this footage to only be on the left. I don't need it also on the right. So I'm just going to first position it. So I'm going to try and get it. So I'm positioning it on the left. So I'm going to maybe move it a little bit to fill that frame. Okay, that works for me because it's going to play the whole time. So it'll be mm -hmm. like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is click, yes, I think it's opacity. And then we click free draw Bezier. I don't know how to say that guys, but that's what we click. I and we're just, Bezier? yeah, there you go. Like, like glossier, yeah. like French. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Even though glossier is not French, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so once you click that, it'll create a mask. And you want to just create a mask. And this is just a square. Hold on, I have to move the zoom controls. There we go. This is just a square. So we're just gonna make a square. And there, it contains it just to that frame. Nice. You don't even have to do know anything else. You can just know that and that's plenty. Now it's that all contained so into there. Quick and easy. Cause so I'm thinking easy. we're gonna have to go and change. Again, this is something else that personally I do the long way, the hard way. You know, where I'm like, well, maybe I need to make crop sure the that the video I something. take is, yeah, is like this, or maybe I need to go in and crop it individually. That was so fast and perfect. That was yes. awesome. So now I'm going to show you guys how I feel on the right side on mm -hmm. this custom frame. So I'm going to go to my footage. I'm going to find the voiceover footage, which I know is in here because I named it for you. So we wouldn't have to be wondering. Um, so we go into here and I'm going to grab that and drag it down to my timeline. Now it's really long because, you know, I need to edit, edit it down to the clip that I want, but I'm just going to say we want, oops, we want this exact little clip, delete mm -hmm. the rest just so that you guys understand how it would work in your timeline. So here it is. Now it's on top of my frame. 
So you want to just move that frame up, move the video down. You know, this is just layers, layer organization. And I want this on the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that clip, which is this VO packages one right here and open it up in my effect controls. If you ever lose it, you just, you know, window effect controls. Things move around a lot when you're working in Premiere sometimes. And same thing, we're gonna go into the effect controls. When you first open it, if you don't use Premiere often, it'll look like this. And you'll be like, where is that thing? <laughs> under opacity. It's easy to misplace. And um, under opacity, you click on this little tool right here on the right. Also just a quick um, reminder in the chat, um, we, we actually will not be doing an artist spotlight. I know that the spotlight countdown just popped up, but um, we won't be doing the spotlight for today. So false alarm, Cody. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Guys, I did it earlier. Let me see what, what's going on here. Am I on the right one? Yes. Okay. Click, 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 click. There we go. So when you do that, um, it doesn't just crop that portion of the video. Can you now move it around? Yeah, you can totally move this around now. So you can actually like move this to clip any. You can move Amazing. the mask. Amazing. So you can do that. Um, that's why I recommend placing the footage before you do it. Mm -hmm. Because Could now you if you... If I move it, it's going to move oh, the, okay. the mask, but I mean, I, I'm sure there's a way around that, but what I just do, like the simple way to do it, you can just delete it mm -hmm. and put it where you want it and then redo the mask. Yeah. Cause my next question was going to be, well, if you did it that way, can you move the video over in the mask or you just move the mask around in the video? Yeah. So, I, that makes look, sense. You can do it either. There's a lot of ways to do things. Like if I were to move this, let's say I go like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just moved it. I can still then go move that mask. <laughs> and oh, okay, it's cool. like it, it's the mask is independent, but the position and scale are going to move the mask. Okay. So if you just then move it over now, you know, like the mask, you can move wherever you want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, however you want to do it first is really up to you, but the effect will be the same. So there you go. Now we have both playing side by side. Let's see if we can get a little, a little preview. Process. I like to record voiceovers for them so that you're not bored. And if you're watching me in the background, you like have some chit chat going on, which I think, I think people are into that. <laughs> so. so there you go. That's how you can do a side by side. And this is perfect for those days when you don't want to get camera ready. Yeah, this is really, it's just a really cute, fun atmosphere, like the way that you've done everything. Um, and also just like the content that you have in there with the animations. I think it just has a really good vibe. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So you can get really creative making your own frames. They don't have to be perfect squares. They can be blobby. It can be shapes. It can be whatever you want. This is just a fun way to show side by sides mm -hmm. and have your voiceover now. My footage on the left is taken with my M50. So it's like a lot richer. Mm -hmm. And the footage on the right is my webcam podcasting setup. So it's a little different, but I'm going to show you how I make some adjustments to kind of, you know, perfect the footage on the right. So it's not so, you know, flat. Okay. First, I'm just going to, it's bothering me. I'm not, I'm not quite centered. <laughs> Oops. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So that's how I would do that. And then when we are creating color editing, I'm just going to do some light color editing just to show you guys what I would do for this exact example. If you mm -hmm. might, if you shot with two different like cameras. So what I like to do is um, create an adjustment layer. And you can do that by going here, new item, adjustment layer. And then I don't want it to be that actually. I want it to be, no, yeah, I do want it to be that. So I press okay. And now you have an adjustment layer. It's right here. I like to put that in my everything else bin, as you can see. And then you bring it down on top of the footage that you want it to affect. And it looks like absolutely nothing happened, which is great. 
because an adjustment layer just holds your edits for you Mm -hmm. until you make an adjustment. There's nothing that it is adjusting. So right now it's just kind of like an empty layer. I almost look at it like, actually, I was just going to, they're called the same thing, adjustment layers in Photoshop, Mm -hmm. but you can turn them on and off and they're not affecting anything until you like turn it on or they only affect the one that it's right above if you do a clipping mask. So it's a lot like that, but for Premiere Pro. And what Mm -hmm. I like about it is that you can make them really specific so I can have it just for this clip or I can stretch it across my entire timeline. So that really kind of gives you some flexibility and you don't have to keep making the same adjustments with every clip, you can just make an adjustment layer and apply it to the clips that you want to apply it to. I love it. I love it. It's really handy. So once you created your adjustment layer and brought it down to your timeline, this adjustment layer is specifically going to be for color. So we're going to go to color. Oops. My zoom controls are wild today. <laughs> they're, they're all over. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're here. That's the little spot that we're working with. And now I entered color mode. So if you enter the color editing area, you should also have this view. But if you don't, let's say you're right here. You're Mm -hmm. like, where's the color? Go to window. Where'd it go? Essential. No, not. Is it that? Wait, hold on. Is it this one? (laughs) There you go. Lumetri color. (laughs) I lost the name of it in my head. Okay. So this adjustment layer is going to with any adjustments that we make to this layer, it's going to affect all of the bottom layers. Mm-hmm. So um, let's make an adjustment to. So I actually don't want it to adjust the frame, right? I don't want it to adjust the frame. I just want it to ad- adjust the um, packages layer. So I'm going to rearrange here a little bit. Visually, it looks exactly the same, like what you're seeing on the program monitor. Mm-hmm. But now my adjustment layer is only affecting the video on the right. And so if I say, let's make it greener, you can see nothing is happening on the left. Oh, nice. Okay. So you can really like get very specific. Um, And if you want to be from Mars or Pluto, you can just- I can go ahead and do that. I can do it. (laughs) So I'm just going to like lower the exposure, maybe bump up the contrast. It is a webcam. Even though it's a great webcam, sometimes it's just not as crisp as, you know, mm-hmm. M50 glass. No, I, I get that big time. I think that's one of the things. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that too. Um, because I think that one thing that folks might be a little hesitant or not very confident about is um, the setup. Like, you know, we're talking about making these videos and organizing the videos and creating the content. But um, it sounds like you've got two different cameras when you actually take the first initial raw footage for this. Um, How do you make those decisions as far as which cameras and which pieces of tech you're going to use? Um, And when you do that, do you do it kind of visualizing the end product? or you just use what is comfortable because that is just what feels good in the process for you? So I would say that I try my best to record everything with the M50 because then Mm -hmm. it's going to kind of lessen the workload that I have to do if everything's already Mm -hmm. um, aligned kind of, if everything's shot on the same camera. But what happens is sometimes, like even though I love my M50, when I have this microphone set up, I have to put it so far away because of the lens that I have that it's kind of inconvenient, you know, Mm -hmm. and I already have this webcam and I know, you know, I've liked this shot. I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, I may as well use that on in a YouTube video. Like it's not, um, harming anyone. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, especially when I know that it's not going to be blown up super big or anything, like how I'm using it here. Mm -hmm. I think that the primary thing should be capturing the footage and you'll figure out how to use it and don't overthink it too much. Like if I also really like this setup, I feels like familiar and comfortable. So I'm more comfortable talking to the camera. That's fine. Um, I would just do, do what is easiest almost, and then figure out how you're going to make the footage look better. There's always things you can do in post to kind of improve that. That's my take on it. Awesome. Um, And then we have um, Laura who's wondering which webcam do you use? Yes, I use the Logitech. I think it's called the Logitech Brio, B R I O. I really too. like it. Me it's too. It's great. It's awesome. It's it's um 
so I think that you and I are probably using the 1080p version right now, but there is a setting on this on this webcam. It's probably the best webcam I've ever had where you can actually it's a USB webcam that can film in 4K. Um, so it's it's really, really cool. Um, and I, I would I would recommend it, honestly, to anyone if you folks in chat are like looking for a good a good webcam. It's a little pricier um, than most webcams, however, but another really good one if you're looking for a good webcam that you can use for this kind of work um, is I would say the Logitech C920 is pretty good. Um, that was the, the webcam I was using just before I got the Logitech Brio. Um, and I used the C920 for many, many years. Um, and I, I ended up, I think I actually owned three of them because there was a time when I had three of the Logitechs like set up in my space yeah. to do different angles and they worked, they worked pretty well. So that's also a more affordable. Um, yeah. It's super great because they're way. compact. So you don't mm -hmm. have to like have a crazy setup, you know? And I think you can take advantage of that. Not everything has to be like the biggest lens, the biggest camera. Yes, this 100%. works for this kind of footage, and especially think, yeah, with voiceovers oh, like this. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think the the Brio and I believe the Logitech C nine twenty. I think that they also have the ability where you can like put them on a tripod. Like I have the Brio sitting on top of my monitor right now in front of me, but I actually have a tripod that I use sometimes in the studio where I just take the Brio off of its, um, its monitor stand and I can screw it into the top of a tripod and I can yeah. you know, lift it up and whatever. So I've done that too. And it's just really handy. Like mm -hmm. just use everything that you have. And just because it's not like the fanciest thing and no one talks, no one on YouTube is like, why the Logitech Brio is the best vlogging camera. Mm -hmm. No one says that, but it's still a really good camera. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. All right, so here's what I did, guys. I just made some adjustments to this adjustment layer, just a touch, just based on how I wanted it to look. I'm mm -hmm. not like a perfectionist with my color editing. Um, I just thought, hey, I look cuter in this light <laughs> than how it was <laughs> before. And that's what I do. You could also use custom LUTs. Oops. Oh, yeah. And there's some preloaded ones already. Let's give them a shot. So usually I just do this. I just kind of adjust the tone and then I stretch it for as long as I need because okay. right now we're working on a short clip. I just stretch it that far, but you could make it a little, a little more interesting by playing with these LUTs and these are the preloaded ones. Let's check them out. A little drastic there, but you can um, lower the intensity, I believe. It could also be because um, there's already effects that you've That's kind true. of changed as well. Um, but Honestly, I can still picture how that could be like used really well. So yeah, these are oh, just some of the other ones that it has and you can still like, you can really adjust everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that that can be really intimidating when you're first getting started, which is why I recommend like, if you're not so sure what LUTs are or what's going on, why not just play with um, these simple uh, adjustments that are kind of common on your phone. Like these are the ones that you see on almost all the editing apps and mm -hmm. you have them right here and you can quickly make an adjustment layer and keep applying it and using it as many times as you need. So yes, yes. I'm going to show you guys like, say I move this all up a little bit. Cornell says, you guys have the same webcam and the same desk. This is crazy. And I was like, I, 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 when I read that, I was like, I know. I, that is crazy. <laughs> I'm thinking about this. I was thinking about it when you said that you had the Brio. And I was like, are we in some weird twilight zone <laughs> right <Yes>. now? <laughs> we are. Okay. And now this is another way you could uh, do a little split screen. I just uh, opened it up for you guys. But mm -hmm. if you have the, the bottom layer without a mask and then the top, the voiceover layer with a mask, it will look like this. This is without the, this is with the, in the frame, out of frame. So it's just interesting. You can, I, I really recommend just playing around with everything, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how I can extend the adjustment layer as far as I want to cover a bunch of footage. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily need it on this footage, but if I had other footage that I needed to apply it on, 
you just stretch it as far as you want and it will cover your entire project. So I think that's really a handy way to do it. And I recommend putting your adjustment layers kind of at the end Mm -hmm. because you can really kind of start getting crazy with your layers. So if you add it at the end, it will feel a little bit more organized. Nice. Yeah. So that's handy. And now the other thing I want to do specifically to this clip is show you guys how to do a little bit of audio editing to make it sound a little better. But I think I'm going to, I want to make this clip longer, but I've I've made it specifically short. I'm going to just delete some stuff just so that we have some runway here to show you guys. Now, this is something that I'm really intrigued by because when it comes to doing the audio, I feel like I'm I'm not, as I've said, like predominantly a video editor, but I can make my way, you know, I can make a a nice looking video if I need to. The audio, however, messing with audio sometimes really intimidates me though. Yeah, it can be really intimidating and it's such an important part of a video. It's some would say more important than the actual video. And Mm -hmm. that's why I really like voiceovers because it lets you have a very controlled space to record. Um, Sometimes if I'm recording just with my other camera, I don't have that tight mic, like really close up. Mm -hmm. Um, A good way to get around kind of that less than ideal mic, like uh, recording is to do a voiceover that's actually crisp, like you can see here. Mm -hmm. So I really recommend this using the voiceover whenever you need to, but a way to improve any footage, I'm specifically gonna be doing this voiceover footage, is using a couple simple things from the essential sound panel. So we just finished using the um, color, the basic color correcting. Now we're gonna go over to essential sound. So- Let's do it. Let me regroup. All right, here's what we're gonna do. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You gotta click click on the video that you want, the clip that you're gonna be editing. For me, in this case, it's this one. Like this little fun rainbow that's happening here. I know, and, I like it, it's cute. <laughs> and we're gonna go over to the audio tab. And now you have your audio panel. It feels disorienting sometimes when you move from one to the next, but let's just go over what we have here. On the left, we have our effects. Here we have our source footage. Here we have our program monitor. On the right, we have the essential sound. And on the bottom, we have our timeline. So everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, you want to click on the audio that you want to adjust. In this case, for me, it's it's this bottom track right here. Then I just okay. do voiceover and then I realize like, oh. Which sounds pretty good because again, it's voiceover, mm-hmm. but we can still make it sound way better. So the quickest thing, if you're like, I don't want to mess with my audio at all. What is the minimum I can do to get away with it? Mm-hmm. To say that I tried. Mm-hmm. All right, if you want to just say, I did something to the audio, you just select it. You have your essential sound panel here. Guys, this this blew my mind when I learned about it because I had been editing videos without knowing this was here. You just click dialogue. And then there's a preset similar to LUTs and you click, I'm going to click podcast voice. No way. And now... So I was like, did you hear that? just it do voiceover so and then better. I realized like, that oh, I have a great. whole podcasting set up. I can do. Video. It sounds so much better. If I what? let's let's I know there's a way to turn it on and off, but I'm blanking right now. So I'm just going to delete the preset. Wait, no, 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 not delete the preset. Just go back to default. Okay. So Free. I was like, going to just do voiceover and then I realized. <laughs> Guys, I keep clicking the wrong things. Okay. <laughs> That's with this is without process. I like to record voiceovers for them so mm-hmm. that you're not that's bored. And if it you're watching so me in the background, better. you like have some. And that's the, like the preset. You can go in and tweak things. But I honestly think most of the time the preset is is great. And I would just leave it at it. So this is how it will sound with one click adjustment. I feel like let me know if you've used this before. Let me know if you're planning on using this, because I think this really changed my life when I learned about it. I'm definitely going to be using that. I swear I'm making a list like both of these days of like things that I'm adding to my video design life from now on. And that is one of them. Yes. So the podcast voice is like my favorite one. That one makes your audio sound like you're on a podcast, Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you can also get creative with it. There's these like, uh, let's say you want to make it sound like you're on an intercom 
you're not bored and if you're watching me in the background you like that could be fun for like a specific little portion of your video maybe just like the intro um you could make it sound like from the radio like have some chit chat going on that could be cool like if you had somebody calling in (laughs) to Mm -hmm. your video you can make it sound kind of cool what is Um, the balancing like balancing male and female voice like what does that mean sometimes i use these but chit chat going on which i think I think people are into that. Similar to so I was like voice. gonna yeah, just do voiceover, and then I realized like, that, oh, like, I have a whole podcasting set up. I can do video it. too. Oh, okay. So it's kind of interesting. So that already makes that sound so much better. And then I'm gonna unmute. This is the track. I don't know why I do that. I should just click the solo track. This is for me packaging. Listening to a podcast. <laughs> I'm gonna say this is ambiance and see how yeah. that sounds. Do you like... Oh, it sounds like kind of... You like can like adjust it. And... Yeah, okay. but I'm actually gonna try a different one. I'm gonna do clear audio type and maybe I'll make it like music, even though it's not music and do like maybe balanced background. So maybe it'll like kind of push it to the back. You can still hear the the podcast really loud. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. But what I'll just do is overall lower that clip level. I I like that, though, like having that in in the back there. I like it a little bit. I wouldn't have this because I had the podcast playing because that's how Mm -hmm. I work. I wouldn't have that the whole time. But sometimes if you have a little bit of like pencil noises and that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff, it can be cool to leave it in the background. Specifically in this example, I think I would choose to omit it just because it's a bit distracting, right? Like my mm-hmm. voice plus that voice. So I would have it sounding like this. I think people are into that. So I was like, gonna- and I wouldn't have anything, mm-hmm. any of the packaging noises just because I had a podcast on and kind of conflicts. But if it was silent, it would work really well. And I just wanted to show you that there are so many things in this um, essential sound panel. Mm-hmm. And then in another situation, you could do it and have them both. And it could be like a little bit of like packaging ASMR. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Really cool. I, I feel like I may have that somewhere in here, but at this point, I'm not sure which clip it is. I have so much working footage. Um, let's see. Let's see if it's this. No, the podcast is on the whole time. Too bad, my friends. Too bad. But it would still sound really cool. And Mm -hmm. just to show you guys what else is in the essential sound arena, I'm gonna clear this type real quick. And you also have music. So let's let's try that. Let's put in some music. So let's say we have no pack, no packaging sounds, right? Because I, you you were listening to something, which is Mm -hmm. what I was, I was doing something. I was listening to something. I'm gonna mute that. And I'm gonna bring in, um, some like lo-fi jazzy beats which mm-hmm. are my favorite so we'll yes, go yes. here on the side audio and i have i have a selection of music let's see and where do you where do you get your music for your videos like where do you look for that yes i use epidemic sound because it's <laughs> they like once you start using it they start curating it for you mm-hmm. and so then i just keep finding songs that i love and i want to use in my videos so i really like using that but you could also do some royalty free music from across um, the internet I've, I've spent a lot of years hunting for good royalty free music and good places to find music yeah. that you can put in videos and i honestly can say i think epidemic sound is the place i have found the most attractive good listening music like i found music there that i've added to spotify playlists just so i can listen to it because i love it whereas i feel like a lot of other places i've been i'm finding stuff that will do you know exactly i always yeah that's how i feel with epidemic sound too is i'm like excited about the music i find there yeah so that's why i keep using it and it makes my life so much easier knowing i can just go to one place and find it 
for yeah. whatever mood, as opposed to searching like the entire internet for it. And you can search epidemic sound by mood, literally. Like yeah. you, you don't just have to search by genre. You can search with emotion yeah. um, and find something that works really well for your video, which is awesome. I thought that was great. Um, and like you said, it does curate for you. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's just on, all around really excellent. But I think you can also access a portion of Epidemic Sound within Premiere. I think you can too. I don't often do that because I love the curated list that Epidemic Sound serves me when I log mm -hmm. in. That's, but yeah. you can uh, access it through here someplace. Hmm. I haven't used it myself. Yeah, let's but see. I imagine. Oh, right here in browse under essential sound in browse. Nice. Yeah. Boom. There um, it is. Some of this is all from epidemic. Some of it is from epidemic. Um, and you can start. Yeah. Look, see mood. So you can, you know, like dreamy, dynamic, mm -hmm. mellow, whatever it is that you're looking for, you can actually hunt uh, for good music by the mood. Um, you can do genres. You can you know, use the filters and stuff. And it's mm -hmm. just really cool. And then I think that you can just grab it right from there and start Let's using see. it in your video. Let's see. I You oh. may have to actually license it depending on which one you which one you choose. Cause I think there's like yeah. a little cart button. So I don't know if that's gonna complicate the process might, of what you were doing, but it might um, complicate what we're doing right this instance, but it's still cool to have. Yeah. I don't know what I did, but like, I think I had accidentally almost deleted everything. <laughs> can you add it's Epidemic fine. Sound albums to Spotify? I don't know if you can add Epidemic Sound albums to Spotify, like by finding them as Epidemic Sound albums, but um, I have I have several songs that I found on Epidemic Sound that I just searched for by the artist and song title from Epidemic. And I found that those artists had their their music on Spotify and I've added it to a playlist for myself. That's so um, yeah, I think you could, you could definitely find a lot of that music on Spotify. There you go. Um, that's awesome that you can do that. Um, also, Cody's asking, can you show one more time how to open the essential sound panel again? Yes. So I'm closing them for you. So let's say we are in our editing workflow mm -hmm. and you want to open up epidemic sound. Oh, ep <laughs> sorry, guys, not epidemic sound, essential sound. <laughs> um, we go to window and then essential sound and it'll pop up on the right. You can also go to the audio panel and it usually po auto pops up there. I just mm -hmm. closed it right before we we did that. So there's, you can open it up wherever you are in Premiere, or you can go to the audio section, audio mm -hmm. um, workspace right here and open it up on the side. Awesome. It's, it's handy, but you can access it wherever you are. So, and then once you're there, um, it'll, it'll look like this. Mm -hmm. You hit dialogue in this case, cause it's dialogue that we're editing, click on the drop down and select the voice that you want, play with them, see what it sounds like. Um, it's, it's incredible. It's an incredible tool, but I want to show you how you can use it for the music too. So in this clip, I'm talking and I, uh, remove the sound from the left. I'm going to, I'm going to go like, actually, I'm going to close this panel here if I can, just to clear it up for you. Close. Wait, no, I want that one eventually. So I'm not going to close it. Okay. So back to this, um, on the, I uh, cleared the audio on the left. There's none of it mm -hmm. on the left uh, footage because I'm going to use some music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this clip, bring it down. It goes on a little longer, but that's okay. It just depends on what you're editing. I just wanted to show you guys how, how this would work. So now there's this music. I muted it. Sorry. Some chit chat going on, which I think. I think people, are, it's too prevalent, right? It's too yeah, loud. A little bit. So what you do is you click on that audio and instead of having to manually adjust it, you mm -hmm. can click music, preset, balance background music. Ooh. Learn to that. So I was like, gonna just do voiceover and then I- It's great. That would be perfect for like intro maybe. Voiceovers or anything, for but I still think it's a little too them. loud. So that you're not bored. And if you're watching you me in the background, level. you like- have some chit chat going on, which I think, I think people are into that. So I was like, I love that so just... much. So it's so much easier than having to go in and try and like, you know, manage it and, and pick it out on your own. That gives you kind of like a really good starting place. Yeah. 
And um, you can do all sorts of stuff once you're here. Like I think the smooth vocal ducking. All right, so let me let me show you what this does. But I actually wanna grab kind of like a busier clip. I feel like this one starts off too slow and it's gonna make it hard for us to show the example. Okay. Okay, so I just replaced the 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 music with something a little bit, I guess, faster. Um, so we click on it. We want it to be music. And let's say instead of the balanced background, which would sound like this, let me just show you what that would sound like. If you're watching me in the background, you like have Cute. some chit chat going on. I personally would lower the entire clip, the volume on, which I think, I think people are into that. But if you wanted, you could also duck it against the audio of me talking. Oh, okay. All right. So let's say smooth, oops, smooth vocal ducking and duck against the dialogue clip. You okay. already have identified the other clip as a dialogue clip. So it knows that it's in there and you can hit that duck against dialogue. Mm -hmm. You can set the sensitivity. Let's just try it out at the default and you have to hit generate frames. Generating keyframes. All right, seems like it's done. Let's see what that sounds like. Process, I like to record voiceovers for them so, so that you're not bored and if you're watching- I talk a lot, so it's hard to tell, but- Watching me in the background- What it does is it kind of ducks the music down when I'm speaking. I'm That's basically perfect. speaking like, the entire have time. Have some chit chat going on. So it's hard to see those drastic <laughs> moments, but it's happening. It's that's happening. awesome, and that's really good. Um, just the 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 quick quickness with which you can do this is just yeah. like really mind blowing to me. Because, um, like you said, you know, you can do all these things without have to go in having to go in and like manually move things around, and that's typically what I probably would have done is I'd be like yeah. okay now I have to look up how to edit all this specifically and now I feel like when it comes to music and my actual voice in these videos I have a very quick and high quality professional way to to do it without spending so much time and I'll get a great end product so yes um, I love this doing cool. this <laughs> I wanted to zoom in and show you guys so basically it, it decided to duck the entire time I talked mm -hmm. which is the entire clip which makes sense as you saw i'm talking the whole time but you can see here that it's functioning by it generated these keyframes that as as soon as the dialogue went away i can do video too mm -hmm. it, it goes up brought it back up okay so that's just something to know that you can zoom in and see those keyframes happening and you're not the one actually having to manually keyframe which would be a whole other live stream mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay that is awesome and I'm going to clear, I'm going to put it balanced background again, and I'm just going to just hold on. I don't think I was clicking on the right one. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right. So yeah, balanced background. I'm going to lower it to like there, I think. If you're watching me in the background, you like have some chit. There we go. That's where I like it. But I want to show you one step to take it a little further. And I'm actually gonna show it to you on a less than ideal audio file. Because I feel like this voiceover is really crisp because mm -hmm. I was with the camera right there. I'm gonna show you like if you record in your room with no mic, which is what happened to me because my mic died and Ooh. it was not, a, it's not a rechargeable mic, it's battery powered. Mm -hmm. You know, the Rode Pro, uh, the Rode, video mic pro it's one of the road um like microphones that you attach to your camera but it's battery powered and sometimes the battery will die and then you're left micless unless you have a stock of batteries which clearly i don't keep on hand <laughs> i i'm not familiar with it um actually but i i mean I've, i feel like i've heard of of that but i yeah i've never used one myself so yes yes it happens okay so cut it out and kind of so use here cutouts. there's no mic this is just from my camera mm -hmm. and lines to bring it. it's a bit echoey that echo is going to be a little bit hard to work with but i wanted to show you how we can improve this audio which is drastically different than the audio we just did over here Let's see we just to give you a little comparison mm -hmm. yes i like to record yeah, voiceovers for them and this was not that yeah it's like 
from the inside of a box. Like you can mm -hmm. hear the echo. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the same tools we just did. I just click on it. Essential sound knows that there's no effects on this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click dialogue preset and I'm going to do, we're going to play around here and see what sounds better. Okay. I think balanced female voice is going to sound the best. So what you just saw was sounds a lot better. Um, a sketch that I'm doing for like a mock. But I still, it's, you know, I can, there's only so much of that um, room audio that you can get rid of, mm -hmm. but we can try and play with it. Editorial illustration. Um, oh. You know, to be honest with you, I don't quite love the illustration sketch. So that's when you start customizing yeah, it. But I think I just need to. And I think that sounds way better than what it did a second ago. Mm -hmm. Kind of in the like. And um, yeah, you can get, there's this thing called creative and it lets you put a different room. So let's see if we do like a warm voice room. Like perfecting stage, I just need to make some stuff. So now that I've sketched it out in way, fresco. Way better. And we can, here, this is the extreme of it. With oh, wow. Paper. But I don't want it that extreme. So we're just going to nice like you just so, very quickly um, ran down a hallway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Pestle pencils. So I think there and sounds a lot better, cut. but there mm -hmm. are still some things when essential sound is not quite enough. There are a few other things you can do, but it's really hit or miss when you're not recording with a mic, like in this footage. I just wanted to show you guys so that you can play around with your footage and see what's what's possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to close essential sound. Okay. And we're going to move over to this here, the audio track mixer, which always feels very intense, mm -hmm. but you'll be okay. So with the audio clip mixer, it only affects the clip. With the audio track mixer, it affects the entire track. The track being this whole line, everything that's on here. I am going to work on the second track so that we can hear the differences between tracks. Um, so I just brought this down to the second track. Now, the second track... I'm gonna clear my my project here for you. Oops. Eh. I clicked undo when I shouldn't have. I am all over with this dragging. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna move that to the second track and now we're gonna play with the audio here. So something that's um, kind of cool to do is just click on, so sometimes this will be hidden. You just have to click, like there's like a little drop down if it's hidden for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't seem to get it to go back to that. But if it's hidden, there's a little arrow here usually and you can open it back up. Um, and then on the second track, cause it's audio two that I'm working on, A2, audio two, I'm gonna name this here, testing audio. I'm gonna name it like, mm, what should I name it? Testing, okay. So that's my track that we're working on. I'm gonna click up here and I'm gonna first do the parametric equalizer here, mm -hmm. which is right here in filter and EQ, you go to parametric equalizer. Nothing seems to happen and you click on it, double click. And now we have this other thing. It seems really intense. To be honest, I couldn't explain to you exactly what it's doing because it's some science type of thing, but <laughs> it works great. So you just click on the drop down presets and it's vocal enhancer. So this is another place to, to like vocal enhance. Editorial illustration. So um, that's with it on. You know, to be honest with you, I that's don't quite off. love the illustration you can sketch, kind of but hear it. I think it's very, I just need to keep like, going and I don't want to get tuned. stuck. Yeah. It almost like the, puts like, the air back in the room a little bit. I just need to make mm -hmm. some stuff. As opposed so, to sounding so flat, it like it rounds out. it out a little bit. So that's one thing. I would say on this specific footage, it's hard to, on this specific audio, it's hard to tell. And it's, it is usually like minute stuff, but it helps. And I just want to give you all the tools in case you're working with like really difficult audio. Um, and then the next one, you can just add layer another one. You go to the drop down, And I think the one that I like is the single band compressor. Okay. Double click. Wait, no, I made a mistake. I think it's the other one. Let me see. Compressor, multiband. I think it's this one. And yeah, you can wait, guys. It's not that one. I have it written down because that there's so many different versions of, and they all sound kind of the same. <laughs> Here we go. No, dynamic. Okay you need to kind of experiment a little bit and search around for it. Yeah, it's this one. It's dynamics. And when you click on it, you can do some soft compression. Oh, in fresco. 
I am going to make it you guys hear with that? Yeah. paper. So I don't, it's hard and for me to explain throw, exactly like the um, difference, but you can just hear it. And what it does is cut, it makes it, cut it, it, out. it makes everything less breathy because with the original recording, you can hear the echo, mm -hmm. you can hear all of the consonants and the, the different um, pronunciations of stuff echo around the room. Yeah. You can hear all the little um, like bass movements of all of the items and it kind of mutes that and gives it a fuller so, sound yeah 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 exactly and i think with the compressors what it does is um make sure that the lows and the highs are kind of compressed and not everything is all over the place so by mm -hmm. by adding this compressor to the entire um track which right now only contains this clip but you can imagine in your project it might have a lot of different clips it'll um compress it so that the louds aren't super loud and the lows aren't super low and you're kind of audio is like way too kind of chaotic right with the mm -hmm. highs and lows this will make the entire track even out so i really recommend adding this even if it sounds subtle i think it has the most effect also on playback on different mm -hmm. devices yeah um i'm i'm pumped about this, this is like mind-blowing to me um we've got some questions in the chat for you um cody bear says how long has fabiola been using premiere I've been using Premiere. I've used it on and off for a really long time, but I've been using it most heavily, like at the end of 2019 and this year. So okay. that's when I started really editing YouTube videos. Um, before that, I wasn't. I was using it. I just wasn't using all the features. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like just cutting. And yeah, like just kind of doing what assembling. you needed to do real quick in it. That's yeah. kind of what Premiere was like for me for a long time. Like something that I, I knew the bare minimum to get by with what I needed. And so I jump into it when I needed to now. And now I feel like I'm on my way to like using it so much more often after these streams. Um, yes. But, uh, let's see. Laura's saying Premiere has so many hidden gems. Bruce says this looks so professional. Um, Laura's also asking what mic do you use specifically when you, when you um, make your videos? So yes. we were talking about that mic dying. Do you have <laughs> just that mic or do you have yeah, like, a so, few different ones? Right. Right now on my camera, the one that gets connected to my camera, I just have that mic, which is the Rode Video Mic Pro. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Um, but I would say that again, it is battery power. So you have to have that battery like and backups of that battery. And it's like mm -hmm. a D battery or something like that. Um, so it's good. It's just battery powered. Um, a lot of people use the video mic micro, and then that's mm -hmm. the one that's not battery powered. You just plug it into the camera. I'm thinking about getting that one, even though the pro is supposed to be a level up. I think I just need a little bit, something more run and gun. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have a the voiceover mic, which I think is Audio Technica. Okay, it's an Audio Technica mic that I use for podcasting and for uh, recording voice voiceover. You can't connect it to a camera, otherwise I would totally be doing that. Yeah, I have the I have the AT twenty twenty myself. I probably the I little the black one that kind of looks. I wish I could lift it up, uh, but it would ruin our shot i think for the but i could show it to you but i i won't but i think i think the at 2020 is one of the most common ones for like this type of stuff so yeah. i wonder if if we have the same mic the same desk and the same webcam it's this mic does it look like that um i th think so oh. you have a you have a you have a, a cover on it though I do. I have a, a fluffy. A, I wish I knew it what it looked like with the cover off because that would really give us um, interesting, interesting the, the know how. Yeah. <laughs> the, the final, the final decision on that one, but that's going to be too much. Um, yeah, at this that point, would be I think a lot. We're like um, copy copies of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see one Peace thing. So yeah, so that's how you edit. Um, when you do stuff in the track mixer, it applies it to the entire track. Um, again, some of depending on what i was uh recording on it sounds a little and different in the, like perfecting stage but like this i think should sound similar except there's a bunch of oh. tissue paper <laughs> and each one has a cue but this one doesn't have the essential sound on it yet so that's also affecting it so that's the thing with essential sound it's not applying it to the entire track it's only applying it to that clip so you can cop but the cool thing is you can copy and paste mm -hmm. you can copy and paste any of the essential sound edits that you make but i just lost our clip so I think it was this one. 
Anyway, you get the picture. One thing before I want to briefly cover before our time is up is captioning. So if you guys don't have any questions on audio editing, which is really dependent on first how you record. So you can see like the voiceover sounds great and I just do a central sound and I'm good. Mm -hmm. But then if I recorded without audio and I really need to do some heavy lifting in post, those are the tools that I use. Um, if you guys don't have any questions about audio, I'm going to move over to captioning, which is like my new fave in Premiere Pro. Yeah, let's do that because we have about 10 minutes left um, of the stream. And I think that's probably a good amount of time to kind of cover that's some things. That's great. Okay. While you dive into it, I want to remind everyone that with 10 minutes left of the stream, um, this is a great time if you do have any last minute questions to get them in um, be because this is episode two of two. Um, and while you can follow Laura or Laura, sorry, I just That's read, it. you ever read something in the chat and then you say it out loud <laughs> by accident. Um, yes. if you, while you can follow Fabiola and, um, check her out on Instagram and send her messages and stuff, this is, um, when you can actually ask her pretty much like, as close to in person, you know, as you can. So get yes. those questions in and let's dive into to the captioning. captioning. Okay. So I'm just going to work on this little clip here and. Um, right now it's the, it's the, um, one with the, with the voiceover, the split screen, mm -hmm. but I think it's still a good one to work with. So what I would do in this case, which the cool thing is there's a lot of talking here, right? Like that going on, which I think there's a lot of talking happening. What I do, I just feel like cutting this, but I don't, I want to save us time. So I won't. Okay. So, um, it's on the the second track. So make note of where your audio is, okay. where your audio is on the track. So this is on the second track, mm -hmm. but you go to the captioning workspace. This is what I use. Like I don't do anything fancy. I go to the caption space and I click transcribe sequence. The one thing is I'm going to mark some in and out points. So it doesn't transcribe the entire area. Okay. I just hit I and, and O to mark the in and out points on that sequence. So I hit transcribe sequence. And I do transcribe in to out point only, right? If, if I wanted to transcribe the whole video, I would do it longer. You, you would mm -hmm. unclick that. But for this example, I'm going to just do this little area. And I'm going to hit audio two, which we renamed testing, if you can remember that from just like a second ago. And the language is English. So it does support other languages. So that's really okay. cool. And once I hit that, I hit transcribe. And it usually auto transcribes pretty quickly. doing all of the magic it's all happening right now i think that you what you just went over also um definitely answered cornell's uh question asking if the transcribe only works with english audio tracks um yeah if you have, have other of types of audio languages. it'll work mm -hmm. yeah i feel like the the possibilities for captioning are like growing within premiere like this is only the beginning this is kind of like i think maybe the second version of captioning in Premiere at this point, because it came out pretty recently mm -hmm. and it's already so amazing. I genuinely wish I could use it for everything, but it's, it's for video. It's incredible. So here we go. This is what I said in that little space process. Awesome. I like to record voiceovers for them so that you're not bored. And if you're watching me in the background, you like have some chit chat going on, which I think I think people are into that. So I was like, gonna just do voiceover and then- So there's one mistake that whole time. Yeah. And all I'm gonna do is just double click and, and I can, can really edit, it. edit it. Oh, wow. Um, and that's actually really um, great that, cause that wasn't, honestly, that wasn't even like a really super big typo no, or- It's just or, like, I know, don't difference. enunciate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but that's like surprisingly very, very good. So this mm -hmm. is super easy. And then what, like when you, once you have this, where do you go, um, yeah. from here? From here, I just click create captions. Cause now that was just a transcription. Then you hit mm -hmm. create captions and then it says create from sequence transcript or create a blank track. You want the sequence transcript mm -hmm. and then, cause that's what you just got. And then, yeah, I just leave subtitle usually style none. And um, you can do single line or double line. You can edit the amount of space between the characters. Oh, I usually okay. leave it as default. It's, it's pretty good. So I hit create. 
and now it created those captions. You can see them timed out. I like to record voiceovers for them. And the best part is you can then export an SRT file straight from here, which mm -hmm. is what YouTube asks you for. So that you have. can have the, ca oh, that's so wonderful. You can have the captioning and it's, it's great. I know YouTube does auto captioning, but this mm -hmm. captioning is, I really think is more accurate. And um, it's really valuable to have the, the like, good captioning in there on YouTube because it's searchable, like captions yeah. are searchable. And so if I say, I say podcasting setup, somebody might Google podcast or YouTube search podcasting setup, and I might come in there somewhere along those mm -hmm. listings. So it's such a, a valuable tool that Premiere has. And it's, you saw how fast it was even on longer videos. It's still really fast. Um, and uh, Richard was saying, Oh, great for accessibility, right? And yes, 100%. Yes, it's this so good excellent. for that. Um, just, you know, while we're here, if you double click on the captions now that they're in here, you can still edit them. Like if you need to make an edit, mm -hmm. you still can. Um, oh, cool, so cool. sometimes you might want to break it up differently. Like, let's say this. I don't really like how that looks, right? Mm -hmm. Looks kind of odd. I just can move it up. Oh, nice. Done. Just like that. So, so it's still sort of really customizable. It it's great. And then when you double click into it right here, this window opens up. And they're all separate little pieces. They're all separate little pieces. You Ooh. could move them around, but I don't recommend it because these are timed out perfectly to your speech. Mm -hmm. So I really love it. But on the right, you have the essential graphics and now you can actually play with like the fonts that you're using. So we could do that. I, I like this ca calling code one and you can make it bigger. What I do is once you have it set, you press push track to style, all captions on the track. Okay. And now, okay. So that's too huge. You can see that, but <laughs> it's like, you can just edit it. So I'll put, let's say 14 and then push track to style. So now they're all too small, <laughs> but it helps. It like unifies all of the captions. So you're not just working in that one. If I were to click right here, I can make it bigger. So this maybe is really like, great. maybe that looks good. And maybe I want to move it up just a touch. Mm -hmm. You have all the controls right here. It's so customizable even after the fact, like once you Mm -hmm. um kind of create it so so what if i did this step i got to this point and i realized that i really don't want it to be double lined can i change that now or would i have to go back into the i step feel like you might have to go back and like, i usually always again? i usually always double line but hold on mm -hmm. yeah i think what you would do is you'd have to click Click on the track and then there's a retranscribe option right here in the transcript. You can go back to your transcript, oh, click okay. create captions, and now you would do single okay. and create. And so I don't want to hit it because it's going to process it again, but mm -hmm. it would process it again into single lines. And the reason for that is that it needs to time out when they're appearing again. It can't okay. just like move the, um, in so my, I think I've, that's how I've always had to do it when I do that. Richard says, do styles carry over to YouTube? And um, I'm not I'm not sure about that, so. I don't think so because um, you would have to, because YouTube doesn't have, let's say like all the fonts that you selected, like the specific one, they might not have it. Mm -hmm. um, but you could burn it into the video if you wanted to. You yeah. can export the video with the captions like burned into it. And then mm -hmm. that could be an option. I don't recommend it because I feel like having the file, the SRT file in YouTube is a good idea and people might not want to watch it with captions on, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still going to be cool. The, the cool thing is you can save your styles. Like if I want my captions to always look like this, let's say I want them to be bright pink, which is not going to be great for legibility, my friends, but let's say that's what I want. I can push it to the entire track caption track. So now they're all oh, like no. that. And then I can say, create style, insane pink captions. So now I can just click insane pink captions and I can, I can select that and all of them 
will be that. So let's pretend I switch it to white again. I think, oh, never mind. I don't like that. I want it. I want it to go back to insane pink captions. There it okay. goes. Nice. So you can have different kinds of caption styles for different kinds of videos, and it's super handy. That's I love amazing. the captioning uh, workflow yeah. here. Um, well, we are going to have to come to a close here pretty soon. We've got maybe a minute or so um, left, but this has been so enlightening and just so awesome. I feel like I've learned so much. I know everybody in chat has learned so much. This has really been a fabulous couple of days. Fabiola, thank you so much for Yay. sharing your knowledge and hanging out with us. Um, before we take off, however, um, where can people find you online? Um, where can people check out your work? And what do you want everyone to know about you and your work? Like if you have any upcoming projects or anything or like yes. your podcast, um, where sh what should we look out for and where can we find those things? For sure. You should totally, you can find me across the internet and Instagram at Fabiolita Draws, which I think mm -hmm. they'll pop into the chat for us. Um, and then you can check out my podcast. It's called Draws in Spanish. It's about Latinx artists. Um, and I have a YouTube channel. So podcasts and YouTube, that's what, that's what I'm up to nowadays. And it's all about art and creativity. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to check it out. I can't wait. Um, I think all of you folks should check it out. It's going to be awesome. And thank you again, Fabiola. This has been a thank blast. You. Um, I, I can't wait to test out my new photo or video editing skills that I have learned yes. from you. <laughs> it's yes. going to be great. I'm so glad that I could be of help to you guys. <laughs>